they learnt do you think they learnt a lot hmm? do you think they said uh, that they will forget everything tomorrow i mean i'm just asking you because when i say this to people people are like no it won't happen because i've got a book and i've got a worksheet and i've got this i've got that you don't need anything if you do this if i do this for 20 days all of them will know their phrases then i need to catch the phrase only every Four days or five days, I'll catch the phrase. I won't give up the phrase. The phrase never gets given up, isn't it? They are if they are in standard seven, or even if they have been in standard six, the phrase is going to be done until they are ten in the tenth. So where is the question of them forgetting the phrase? Never ever. But the understanding the phrase, the word opens into a phrase without a verb, and then it opens into a clause with a verb, is an important piece of. structured learning that is happening in the child's mind now you don't have to not give them labels i gave them all the labels no i said phrase i said clause the clause was hard so i i will pull back now it depends on the class there will be some class who will be able to take the clause also very well some classes there will be some confusion now there are children two children who are confused i will not push it because you do not want to burden right and you don't have to burden because this week after week of you got 30 weeks in a year you've got 150 days to do this imagine if i did this for 150 days if i took a lesson like this i don't have to do it for half an hour even if i spaced it out at 5 minutes for 150 days there's no way my kids are not going to learn all of this and a lot more did i tie it into the writing no I did. I talked to them about how they are going to use phrases and adjectives. I didn't ask them to use clauses because I thought that it was a bit much for them. But I did tell them that you will use phrases. I'm showing them how to use phrases. Now, when they say under the table, I'm telling them the table needs to be shown. Now, the table will get shown in their writing, or the man will get shown in their writing, or if it's a dupatta, it will get shown in the writing. but it needs to be shown now when you speak of adjectives you tell them okay you need to look at size shape color etc you are looking at children writing better otherwise the grammar that you do is sitting in one pocket and you are doing some some exercises there which has got nothing to do with writing because if it had something to do with writing then their writing must automatically improve this will improve their writing because i'm basically telling them use a phrase and start expanding it so tell me what are the fears now hello this is an interactive session for us i'm not coming back again and again to goregaon this is your chance hmm you got a mic you want to give her a mic yeah Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we started with the sentences for the revision week, and uh, we started with the first sentence. The the problem which I faced it. Which class are you talking? Seven about? standard. Mm -hmm. So the problem which I faced it, I could not complete it in that thirty minutes period. There were many questions that were coming up. So like touching. Did you up, hear any questions? I just did a class. Did you hear any questions? What was the difference between your class and my class? I want you to reflect. I did the uh, instructions like punctuate, marks the. Just think of what was, what did you do, and what did I do just now? What was the difference? That you could not complete. I could complete. I completed quite a few items. My children now know their letters. I did a prefix, suffix. Uh, I mean, uh, not a suffix, a prefix uh, item. I uh, revised prepositions. I did uh, parts of speech. I did uh, groups of words. I made them all say a phrase. I did a bit of oral work with them. I did adjectives. I linked it to. I did so many things in half an hour. What is it that you are saying that you can't finish? Is my question. I think it's a simpler sentence. What your sentence? Sentence which you took is a simpler one than the one which was given here. What was the one that was given there? The magnificent alien. could strike purposefully like avenging crusader and he could take a part okay 
You are going to do only one sentence a day. You are not going to do all those five sentences that are there. That's the first thing to remember. So if I have the magnificent alien who stride purposefully, what is the noun? Now if your children don't even know what a noun is, you will find everything difficult. But then you have to accept that it is a failure of your system. You cannot say this system is too hard. You have to say my system has failed. And I, I say this very cruelly to people because they never acknowledge the failure. If you don't acknowledge the failure, you will not move into another space. You will make excuses. See, you will say the sentence is too long. There are such big, big words. How do you expect children to do? Trust me, in their biology books, there are bigger words than this. No, but see, your child doesn't know what a noun is. So he needs to pick out, the, can he pick out the alien as a noun in the sentence? They can pick out the nouns, huh? but when it comes to the kinds of nouns, then there are... Don't do, don't, see, I never asked for a definition. Did I ask for a definition? No definitions. No, no definitions. Yeah. And no need for types of nouns and things like that. You're just saying alien is a noun. Hmm. If alien is a noun, I can say the magnificent, magnificent is a adjective. Now I would say if you can't get it, I'll say okay, magnificent is an adjective. Give, change it, change the adjective. Come on, change the adjective. Give me, give me a simpler adjective. Strange. The strange alien, the miserable alien, the the beautiful alien, the ugly alien, the odd alien. I can, I will work with a lot of adjectives. It's a vocabulary building exercise for me. If my children don't know, I love it because I'm going to tell them, you know. Make them do so many adjectives that are simple and then I will lead them on to adjectives that are complicated. So the magnificent alien is deliberately put there so that you have an opportunity to teach. Not to teach the word alien, but for the it child to be nice. exposed to the word alien. Otherwise he will always be doing odd alien, small alien, big alien, which is what uh, typically grammar books do. They dump it down to the most ridiculous scale so that every minute that you are spending with a child which is precious is wasted. Because you are doing big, small, what were they giving? They were giving me, I told them, no, it's not grade 3, you will not give me that kind of life. But you need to demand, otherwise children will sit with small and big and it's perfectly alright to call them, they are adjectives, aren't they? There is nothing grammatically wrong, so you can't say, no, you are wrong. But you can say, I don't want this kind of boring adjectives. I want something that is befitting of a grade 7. If I don't use words like befitting, they are not hearing it. When he said with specs, I told him bespectacled. It's an, it's ex, that is exposure. You are a resource in the classroom. They learn a lot from you. If your own, if your whole objective in a grammar class is to finish an, you know, a set of exercises and run out of the door, then they won't learn anything. Then it will just be one of those things where you can tell the parents, ah, this book is over, this book is over, this ex we did four exercises, this is the portion for the exam. What are we doing? We are not teaching. We are passing time and we are passing the buck also. Then you can say, oh, that parent, first generation learner, he doesn't know anything, he won't know also, he's lazy. You can blame the child, you can blame the parent, you can blame society, you can blame the system. And you can go on like that. But actually the buck stops at you. If you are not going to take that and say this is my responsibility, then it will become everybody else's responsibility. So if it's going to be your responsibility, you better start using language that you want them to use. Right? Therefore that word magnificent alien is deliberately put there. Not to torture the teacher, but to educate the child. Right? And I am going to ask many other words for I'll say, I'll say, what are the synonyms for magnificent? Come on, give me synonyms for magnificent. Madam, synonym for magnificent. Majestic. See, now everybody is thinking, no? Because you are thinking, I'm going to come to you. And that's what I want. I want every, all the minds active. Huh? See, she was dreaming. I caught her. Hmm. Then, superb, magnificent. Great, small word, amazing, marvelous, fantastic, grand, okay. So you can do this kind of work with that one word here in the sentence. Don't limit your imagination. 
If you gave me this, I would do this kind of work. So that's vocabulary work. And it's done very quickly because children will give it to me. Yes. I have a question. This sure. Is, this is reinforcing what they have learned previously. They already know what adjectives are and we are taking it to a new level, to a more advanced level. But when there is new learning, for example, there is a word there, avenging crusader. Now, right. avenging is actually, it is a verb, but it is used as an adjective. So, our seven standard children, no. they no. ask us that, ma'am, it's a because, verb. Why is it in front of a noun? Because from grade two, you all have been teaching them the wrong thing. <laughs> Whenever you get a da word like dancing, you've been underlining and calling it a verb. So, it's, now you're coming to seven and you're trying to tell them it's a gerund, it's a participle. Of course, they'll get confused. This, uh, please admit, the whole, all those fingers are pointing here. Don't look anywhere else. It's not my no, sentence I'm, that's a no, problem. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not blaming the sentence. I'm asking you that so, when there is new learning. It's not new learning. It's corrective learning. Yes, so when because there is learning of this sort, what do we do? Do we, you have do, to we so do the rules? Do we... Don't do any rules. Tell them that when... How will you explain this to them? What is an adjective and what is so an So then we... No, what no, we tell did. me how you do it. I told them that yes, it is a verb, it is a kind of verb, but it's here not a verb. It, it's is, not a it is verb. doing the work of an adjective. No, it's not. It's not a verb. It's not a verb. It's a that participial is. adjective. So we have to give them oh, the label. Don't part, there is no such thing as it's. First of all, it's not a verb. When you okay. say dancing girls, okay. dancing there is a clear adjective. Because it has an ing. It's an ing word, not verb, w-r-d word, we call it a participle, a present participle. So you can also have danced, d-a-n-c-e-d as the adjective, then it's a past participle. The broken vase, what is broken? It's not a verb, broken is an adjective, but because it looks like a verb, they're called verbals, it's an it looks like a verb, it's called a participle. Otherwise, we could have just called it adjective, no? Why create another name for it? So then in, in this case, then what See, one mean? thing I want you to remember is your own grammar needs to be very good. So stop watching Bade Achhe Lagte Hai or Khub Surat or whatever it is you are watch and start doing grammar in that time. Like if we can torture children, I think we should torture ourselves also. Your grammar should be like this, otherwise you can't teach. How can you teach like, you cannot teach like this. Because you will constantly be in doubt. Then you've got all these things where you are calling adjective, verb adjective, you are saying it's a verb that I, it's not a verb, it's not a verb, it's not a verb. You'll start building it from grade 2. So in 2 you will tell them an ing word without a helping verb is not a verb. You start from 2 saying that. Book will sit in, this book will tell you from two that begins. At some point you tell them they are imposters, they are pretending to be verbs, but they are not verbs. And there are three of them. Two ING ones, participle and gerund. So when you say swimming is a great exercise, I can say chess is a is a, is a great exercise, or cricket is a great exercise. I won't call cricket a, a verb, will I? So when I see swimming, why am I jumping and marking it as a verb? Because there's an ing attached to it. So they need to check the imposters. If you don't do that properly, your simple compound complex will never come to the child. You'll never understand how you simplify, how you make a, a sentence simple by creating a gerund or a participle in place of the verb. He will not get it. The other last one is what? Let's see. Which is the last one that's an imposter. Imposter means it's not a verb but it looks like a verb. Which one is the last one? The infinitive. Two plus the verb. So two ing words, one is a gerund, one is a participle and the infinitive are not verbs. This needs to be told from grade two and brought up like that. So they will never ask you this question. This has been purposely put there. Because they have been doing it all the way. It's a loop. The grammar syllabus is loop. Which means if I'm teaching something in grade 2, it will come up in grade 4 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. So this avenging thing, when your children come from grade 2 up to you, they'll, they'll never mark it as a verb. They won't even ask you. But then now your 
plunging them in the middle of seven. Now you have a choice to either repair the damage or to continue the damage because it's convenient for you and send them out in, you know, damaged goods. That's your choice. So what do you want to do? That's, a, that's the question. That's a, it's an almost, what do you call it? It's a moral question. What do you want to do? You know that what you are doing is wrong. Do you want to continue on that path? Because that's a convenient, easy path. Nobody will ask you any questions. Because the whole world is teaching grammar like this. Send them out or do you want to catch it now and try and repair it? What do you want to do? That is the question. That is the only question you need to ask about whether you want to do grammar this way or that way. There is no other question. It's a matter of conscience. Because what you are saying will not work. You can't teach them. You can't catch it there at this seventh standard and do it. So that's the avenging. But they'll all be able to say it's an adjective because there is an angel there. So then I would say, okay, avenging angel is a problem. Let's change angel. Change angel, please. Give another word for angel. What can you put there? Can I put there avenging beautiful? Can I put there avenging purposely? No. Why can't I do that? Because only the same part of speech can be substituted. That is the rule I want you to teach. I don't want you to teach any other rule. That's the big rule. That you can change one part of speech with another. So instead of avenging angel, I can make it beautiful angel, pretty angel, small angel, black angel. I can change it into an adjective because avenging is an adjective. That's the acid test to find out what that word is. You will not be able to move another part of speech into that. So angel can only be replaced by a adjective.